G'day everyone. This is my attempt at making a uh, spot welder at home. Now before I start, uh, the usual disclaimer, if you don't know what you're doing, uh, electricity can and will kill you if you're not careful, if you don't know what you're doing. So I'd hate for somebody to um, injure themselves or kill themselves because they're trying to copy what others have done on YouTube. So if you don't know what you're doing, don't attempt this at home. Okay, now getting back to the story. I, as others have done on YouTube, have started making these um, spot welders using a microwave oven transformer. The cheapest chips. Usually when people have an issue with a microwave, they basically throw them down the tip. All the new ones are basically inverter types and they're not really worth um, repairing. However, the older style ones uh, use a big heavy transformer, which uh, they are starting to become quite rare actually and uh, fortunately I had mine for about 10 years sitting in a shed waiting for something to do. Anyhow, to cut a long story short, uh, basically the transformer has two coils. The bottom uh, brown one you can see there, that's your primary, and uh, where this cable is, there used to be a secondary coil, which is this one here. This is your high tension coil, a couple of transformers. Now, this stuff can kill you. Okay, it just runs in the thousands of volts and there's a decent enough current that it will actually injure you. So when you pull it out, make sure the capacitor is discharged and uh, you don't really need a lot of people just cut these off um, and throw them away. I basically um, cut the bottom of the transformer uh, in half. Cut the, There's a, used to be a weld there, cut that off on each side and the two halves separate and you can pull these out with a bit of effort then re-weld it up later on. Anyhow, I originally started and uh, using 70mm cable uh, for my uh, secondary and I got about three wraps in it and it ended up being about 3.05 volts which isn't bad. I don't know what the amperage uh, came out of it because my uh, multimeter only goes up to 200 so not much good. This is well and truly above that. Anyhow, I decided that um, this wasn't going to do the job, so I pulled the cable out and replaced it with 10 wraps of 10mm square welding cable, and this transformer will end up being my uh, heavy-duty battery charger. So, getting back to the story. As we all know, size is everything, and bigger is better. So, I got myself a cheap uh, welder. It's a COG Transarc Easy Welder which I picked up for 20 bucks from a guy's clearing out a shed. Not many people want these old transformers uh, type welders because they're all going to the inverters which give you better grunt, better welding, etc, etc. And as I said, they're fairly cheap and they have this massive transformer in it. Now this transformer was built to a price. Uh, they used aluminium uh, uh, windings and coils and although it does the job it's not the best ideally it'd be nice to have a copper coils but for 20 bucks can't complain anyhow where this one this cable sits there used to be a uh, secondary coil and they were made out of thin aluminium strips wrapped around which gave you the current for the welding this is your primary coil also made out of aluminium wire you leave that one alone basically so Anyhow, after cutting out the aluminium stripping, I basically put two coils of 70mm square welding cable. Each cable has over a thousand uh, strands in it, and each coil is wrapped over each other. So you have two uh, cables leading out from each, and they're attached to my um, arms via various lugs. Now, the actual handle and welding arms are 19mm uh, steel bar. I would have liked copper, but the price of copper is fairly phenomenal, so this will have to do. Basically just crimped up some um, cable ends and attach it via bolts. Now, this arm itself uses a two uh, roller setup. These rollers are basically polyurethane and I think they use them on uh, small um, uh, motorbikes 50cc or thereabouts for put tension on the actual uh, chain uh, pick them up for a couple of bucks on eBay okay now the two arms themselves um, are basically welded to a piece of uh, plate and it's basically uh, drilled into a block of wood and these are basically thre uh, threaded and tapped I use brass bolts but anything will do it's not really all that important now this top arm is basically pivoted 
buy this big bolt purely because I had it lying around and needed that big but that's what I had. The second bottom arm also is a um, similar sort of thing bolted uh, to the frame and it's all electrically insulated. The actual uh, frame is bolted from underneath this uh, piece of plank and that's hardwood because I've got a heap of that lying around. So it's all electrically insulated from each other. You're only talking about five and a half volts so it's less than half the vo voltage of a car battery. Only difference is that this is AC current rather than DC current but it's not enough to actually uh, generally kill you or injure you. You can touch it when the machine's operating and it shouldn't have any effect on you whatsoever. Okay. Now the 240 core is another story, you don't want to touch that without the covers on, okay, because that can and will kill you. Now this top arm has also got a spring mechanism, so basically uh, when I release it, the jaws open up automatically. Now, as I said, this is a two roller system, I can push it forward towards the transformer and it locks the arm in place, so for hands-free operation. If I want to put some serious grunt on it, I just pull it forward towards me and down, and that puts a lot more pressure on the actual jaws. So it's fairly straightforward, just a bit fiddly to get it all going. All the stuff I made out of scrap I had lying around in my shed. Um, so that's the general build. Now, at the back of it, that um, there is the choke. Now, that's just a big block of laminated steel which slides in the middle of the transformer and out. As it slides in, you're basically diverting the electromagnetic uh, field to um, the actual choke and there's less going into actual uh, heavy duty cable. So if I'm doing light stuff, I'll push it in. If I'm doing heavier steel to spot weld, I'll pull it out to get the full amperage. Now, I have actually tested this unit and um, I have made a uh, 10 mil square piece of steel glow yellow after about uh, 20 seconds to 30 seconds. So it certainly has the amperage there to do what I needed. Most of the time you're only spot welding you know, up to one mil, maybe one and a half, two mil thick steel. So it's got enough grunt to do it. Um, at the moment it's still in the naked form. Um, I am going to finish it off by uh, raising, building a frame and raising the transformer up because at the moment it's sitting uh, just about an inch above my uh, steel welding bench which is about an inch thick and I'm sure the electromagnetic force is being diverted and uh, so I've still got to build a frame for it, put it in enclosure, put a fan in it, circuit breakers, switch, uh, off and on. Uh, I'm building a, getting some parts to build a uh, timer set up so I can be able to vary the, the amount of duration the arc is strikes from you know split second up to however long I want it um, which will be operated by a little press button switch um, but I've still got to wait for those parts so in the meantime this is what, I, what I've got and I'll do another video later on and show you how it's all working and um, Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for part two.